Hello and welcome to the Mobile Tech Addict Show. I'm your host Gareth and I'm going to take you through what's happened this week in the UK tech industry. Don't worry, this isn't replacing our weekly podcast, no, or hangout. It's just going to be a side quilt thing to it as well that we'll try and put out once a week. God willing. That means you have to put up with me. And I'm not aiming homes, thankfully. Okay, so this week uh, over on the site we have an unboxing of the HTC One M8 and Matt takes us on a detailed tour through the device. Now, this is uh, HTC's biggest device to date and it's their flagship device so it had a bit of a big hurrah last week when they first launched it. Uh, this thing comes packed with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor running at 2.3 gigahertz. That's a quad core of course. It's got two gigabytes of RAM inside it and that gives it a thorough test throughout the 35 minute video and has an in-depth look at HTC's Sense 6, has a play with the duo camera I'll have to say he's enjoying that HTC dot view case quite a bit. He showed it off to me and got a bit giggly about it whenever he was playing with it and it's quite nice. It's quite nice. Also this week, the Samsung Galaxy S5 has been delayed. Clover reporting that they were expecting a large stock in uh, on the 11th. However, it never arrived and Samsung have said that they've delayed the shipping of the Samsung Galaxy S5 until the 14th of April. So it's not that it doesn't, it's not out there. It's just they weren't able to send it out to the online retailers, which is a bit of a pity. I imagine there's going to be many unhappy people out there, which is really quite sad there busting to get their flagship Samsung devices and they're probably paying a premium right now to get it so uh, I'd be a bit miffed if it were me. Next up is AT&T. They have leaked some of the specs of the new Asus Padphone X. Now, this is a series of phones that they've put out that have a largest phone that fits inside an even larger dumb tablet. This tablet uh, allows you to charge the phone and uh, utilizes the phone's inner core to power a full tablet experience. The phone itself has a 5 inch 1080p full HD touchscreen, a 13 megapixel rear camera and a 2 megapixel front camera. Now this runs on a 2.3 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 processor and has 2 gigabytes of RAM so it's a bit of a speedy little git. And it fits inside of a, a larger tablet um, that is a 9 inch tablet with a 19 by 20 by 1200 touchscreen on the front. It's got a one megapixel camera built into it, but also in addition to the 2300 milliamp hour battery on the pad phone, you get a 4990 milliamp hour battery inside the larger tablet that will charge the phone. Pretty handy. They've been doing them for years. I love them, but I've never bought one. So I took it upon myself to unbox the HP 14 Chromebook that uh, HP very kindly let me have a play of. Uh, this is a 14 inch LED backlit Chromebook with a 1366 by 768 display at running at 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It's a heavy Chromebook, it's a lot heavier than any of the other Chromebooks I've had a play with. This is sitting at four pounds, just over four pounds. Most of that is made up from a battery that gives you a whopping 9.5 hours of battery use. Inside the Chromebook is an Intel 1.4 gigahertz Celeron Haswell enabled processor, two gigabytes of RAM. I believe there's a four gigabyte variant of it as well. And it has two USB three sockets along with one USB two. I found it quite difficult to distinguish which was which, although there's two on one side and one on the other. So I'll just go with the two on one side or the USB three, but they're not blue. They should be blue. That would make sense. Be better if they were. Lenovo have announced that they will be putting out three new tablets of varying sizes. These are tablets that uh, run on basically the same spec across the board. Uh, they have Qualcomm MediaTek 1.3 gigahertz processors in them, one gigabyte of RAM, 16 gigabytes of internal storage, five megapixel camera on the back and a two megapixel camera on the front. That's where it will go. And they all have IPS LED displays, which would be quite nice. Sprung upon us this week was Amazon's Fire TV. Now, this is a new set-top box that plugs into your television and it provides you with Amazon content plus a few extra little applications that allow you to get other content as well. There was no big hype before the Amazon Fire TV release. Uh, however, it does look to be a pretty good device. It's running a Qualcomm 1.7 
gigahertz. It's running a Qualcomm 1.7 gigahertz quad core processor. It's got uh, dual band Wi-Fi in it, two gigabytes of RAM, a voice search feature in the remote, much like the Sony GS8 that was released last year. It screen mirrors the Kindle Fire HDX. There's a large focus on gaming and you can purchase a $40 gamepad to go with it. There's no release date for the UK at the moment. It took quite some time for the Chromecast to come to the UK. So uh, we can expect some form of delay before we ever get it here. However, obviously BBC and ITV and Sky players would need to be put on there as opposed to the Hulus and, well, HBO isn't there on the Amazon, but uh, it might be by the time we actually get it on our shores. So this was released eight months after the Chromecast and there was no build-up, which makes me think that there's something else happening and they actually tried to rush it to get it out probably ahead of Android TV or any. Android TV will hopefully not require you to have to repurchase games that you already own through the Google Marketplace or Market Store or Play Store, Google Play. That's that's what it's called. Sorry, I'm just getting caught up there. Um, whereas Amazon run off their own store as well. So if you own a an Android device, you probably will not be able to play a game that you own on that Android device on the Amazon Fire TV with, without repurchasing it through the Amazon App Store, which is a bit of a pain. Samsung have unveiled three new tablets. These seem to be their budget range of tablets. They're the Galaxy Tab 4 range. These three all package a 1.2 gigahertz Qualcomm processor, 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of storage, three megapixel cameras, and 1.3 megapixel cameras on the front. There's very little to differentiate them aside from the size of them. We can expect to see these at the lower end of the market, probably being given away by Carphone Warehouse with a device if you decide to buy one. There looks to be good news on the USB front because Type-C has been leaked. Some pictures appeared on CNET about two weeks ago actually now uh, that show a cable that is capable of being reversed whenever you plug it into the bottom of your phone. This means you won't have to wrestle with a charge cable if you're trying to plug your phone in at night or around the back of the computer or something like that. It'll make things an awful lot easier whenever you're plugging things in. Uh, there hasn't been too much information released about the uh, cable yet as to what we can expect with transfer speeds, but uh, there is speculation that uh, they'll obviously double or triple or quadruple the speeds that we have already seen so far. And uh, it does mean that you may have to go out and buy yourself a new dock for your phone if you buy a new phone. You can't recycle the dock, but that generally doesn't really bother too many people unless you're an iPhone user. Finally, we're going to have a look at some budget deals uh, because we didn't do a podcast this week. I don't want you guys missing out on some particularly good bargains that can be found in the UK market today. First up is over at EE. You can get yourself a free iPhone 5C on the £23.99p a month contract with a voucher code iPhone 5C99. And now that's normally $34.99 or you have to pay £99 for the phone up front on the lesser tariffs. So using that code will get you the $23.99 tariff and no upfront cost for the iPhone 5C. Amazon in Germany are selling the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 at a whopping £368.40p. This is a particularly good deal, but given exchange rate fluctuations, you can probably expect to see the price go up or down a little over the next few days. And finally, if you pre-order the Oppo Find 7A, you can get yourself a free 32 gigabyte SD card, a spare battery, and an easy cover. That all comes for 330 pounds. Now this is a pretty nice looking device that has a 5.5 inch QHD display. It runs on a Qualcomm quad core Snapdragon 801 2.5 gigahertz processor. There's three gigabytes of RAM on this monster and it has 32 gigabytes of storage which is pretty big and combined with the 32 gigabyte SD card that they're giving away free, that makes 64. Hey. If you want to get in touch with us, you can by emailing us at uh, podcast at tracyamat.co.uk or me at gareth at tracyamat.co.uk. Let me know what you think of the show. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Gareth Miles, G-A-R-E-T-H-M-Y-L-E-S. And of course, Tracy and Matt is on Twitter too, at Tracy and Matt. Check out the podcast on a Thursday evening. We do a live hangout as well. There's usually myself, Dan Carter, Phil Lane, and of course, Matt Davis. And with any luck, I'll be seeing you next week. So take care, everyone.